Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, July 3rd. Happy holiday weekend for those of you here in the U.S. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, Drag Race, Tea Time, All Stars, Season 7, All Winners, Episode 4, where we're going to talk about episodes number 7 and number 8, a.k.a. Uh, these were Legendary Legend Looks and Santa's School for Girls. And for those of you who haven't been with us before, hi, welcome to the show. My name's Gary. With me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. Uh, and we are going to have a discussion about the most recent episodes of the All Winners All-Star Season. You ready to get into it, Damon? Oh, let's do it. Okay. Racers, start your engines and may the best legend win. Hey, look at that. <laughs> 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 Only took over half the season for me to finally get the right clip. <clears throat> it's all right. It. Well, you know. <laughs> Do you know, like, ever since I realized that I didn't have it, every time I was watching, I was listening, and I couldn't find the right one because there's always this, like, weird sound cue audio thing. Someone else starts talking. There's a sound. And I'm like, I just need a clean version of that to just snip out. Right. So I finally right. got it. Yeah. Good. Anyways, so this uh, segment is called Put the Pedal to the Metal, uh, and we're going to have a discussion about three potential things, not necessarily all, but they are possible. The first one is serves, um, which are the positive things that we appreciated about the episodes. The swerves, because uh, maybe you got to swerve that road hazard like when mm -hmm. you're doing this race. It is not a good mm -hmm. thing. It is a negative. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there's nerves. And nerves could be positive, like... Oh my gay god, clutch the pearls, can't believe she did that. Or wait, I got a I got a sound clip for this one. Where is it? <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can find it now. <laughs> what where is it? Um boop, 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 boop. hang on, where's it at? Uh oh. Oh no, did I get rid of it? Oh no, there it is. <gasps> what the fuck you doing here? <laughs> that <laughs> So bad, so bad that Mama Roo has to say What the fuck you doing here? <laughs> You know, oh. so these are our overall thoughts of um, the potentials of them. Could be positive, could be negative, could be uh, really, really good or not good at That's all. That's some honey. shady shit. That's some shady shit right there. Well, you know, hey, it is a, it is a drag race if there isn't some shade involved. Am I am I right? Yeah, uh, you're right. You know, because. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, well, David, I... uh, why don't we get into it? What are your thoughts? So. This might be kind of shady as I say this, but it's, and it, can I put it in capital letters? Finally, a good director. Oh, oh, uh huh. Yeah, I, um, thank you. So, right, <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, so in this recent episode, the Santa School for Girls, they had guest judge, and I wrote her name, um, Janika, Bra Janika Bravo, I think it's her name. And she is a noted director, but have you, I don't know her. I didn't know her beforehand. I'll just own that personally. Same. Just like, don't know who you are. But what I did enjoy, and I actually stopped as we were watching it and complimented, she was a great director. Mm. Because it wasn't just like pity paltry things that could be like fixed with like, a, again, a good direction. She was actually providing critique and providing feedback and asking for more or at giving specifics and talking about things and giving some good like moments and giving positive feedback and positive reinforcement mm -hmm. and just asking for more. And I, and it wasn't just for one person. Correct. Talk, talking to you, uh, Michelle. Um, it was <laughs> overall every, every person that was in front of her, she gave some level, or at least what we saw, we'll put it like that. Mm. She gave some level of something to give them either a lift or a change or an edit, or maybe you should do this instead of that. Like it was just overall such great work. And I am giving serve to that because again, to be shady, finally we get someone that I think honestly knows what they're doing and is able to do it well. Well, 
so I, I, I caught I caught that little uh moment in your in your uh feedback just now. And I agree with you. Uh Rue, Michelle, Ross, Carson, the mainstays, are <laughs> not effective communicators in the director's chair. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because we get things like, can you give me more? And they don't really describe it. Like they don't, they don't get into uh -huh. detail. And I loved how she said, um, this is a moment where I think there should be unity and not so much separation. So I think mm -hmm. like if the fact, if all three of you can say this together in sync, that will like deliver this. But then she was able to take them out of that and was like, right, now this is a moment where I don't think it should be in unity and there should be a lot more like, you know, uh, you know, individualism and kind of mm -hmm, like, you know, mm -hmm. flair or whatever. Right. And, and I loved how Evie and her confessional was like, I love maybe acting is for me because I love this director and they were using my language. I mm -hmm. thought it was kind of funny how they were kind of. She would say it. a word and then you would get it. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. How they were editing Evie and she was like being all like, she's on my vibe. Like she's using my right. language. And they were kind of giving her this strange, like, I don't think they played the oop de doop de music, but it was one of these things <laughs> where I was like, really? I was like, yes, I get it. Not all directors vibe with all, you know, with cast, but still, I was like, I don't know if we need to do that to Evie. But um, no, I agree with you. I, I, I appreciated that she really brought something to it. And she really did seem to be a fan. Like she, uh -huh. she seemed to understand the concept of drag yeah. as an art form, and not be like, "I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here." But so you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, people. I'm gonna say something. And again, you might want to hit that shape button. But um, I feel like, I feel like maybe because they knew who she was, I feel like they gave her the script and stuff beforehand. I feel like they were like here. This is what you're doing. This is the script that you're doing. And it wasn't like the day of or something like that. Maybe she had it for a while. Mm. Like, I, cause she get, she was very good. Like she knew what the story was this. Okay. Okay. Again, super, being super shady. Sometimes I feel Michelle Carson, Ross, RuPaul. I feel like sometimes they're literally handed the script like the day of and be like, you're going to direct Queens on this. And this is what you need to do. And they go through it. And then it's kind of like, what am I doing? Um, this time I feel like Miss Bravo um, knew the script and knew what like the beginning, middle, and end were, knew what the story was supposed to be a lot better than, again, these other, the other people that we know that have mm -hmm. directed them do, and was able to give us a more cohesive story between the characters, which, as we know, we know these, whoever write these scripts, um, they're not always the greatest of characters. Um, they're usually kind of one dimensional. Um, but. Right. And to be fair, like, especially if anybody has not really seen the regular series or the all stars, like if you're just coming into this is your very first thing. So here's the thing to know, like it's taken me years. Like my goodness, like what we've been watching it 14 years now going on 15 years since the very beginning, you and I like individually before we, we did the show, but it's like, it has taken me this long to understand that, like, when they do these things, these are really meant to be camp uh -huh. classics. These are meant to be redunculous. Like, they're not uh. supposed to have some seriousness to them, really. Correct. Hence, Correct. we take a holiday, like, movie, and we mash it up with horror. So we're mm -hmm. kind of going in the Silent Night, Deadly Night, like, arena uh -huh. of a movie with a killer Santa Claus. But then we add Mean Girls and we add in, like, uh, in addition to Mean Girls, and I can't think of what I want to say other than maybe, like, Horror Story, you know, uh, American Horror Story, where it was, like, the school for witches kind of uh -huh. thing. You know what I mean? Like, which yeah. they already did that in the previous season. It's kind of, it's kind well. of like, <laughs> it's kind of like the Scream Queens um, show, mm. TV show. I don't know. I didn't watch it. I'll just, I just... Right. Again, I've only seen little previews. Right, but anyway. just, so they, you know, they kind of throw it all in a blender. They hit puree, and then they pour it out, <laughs> and this is the script that we get. And it is kind of strange and kooky. Yeah. Um, and I will say this: like, I was very nervous for Raja because Raja wanted so badly to be Scrooge, and as I'm watching it, I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this because I feel like oh. you're you're being a bit, like, I don't know if I um, want to say much, but it was it was a thing. But then, obviously, that was really what was being sought out. 
Mm-hmm. And I will. I what, will get. What, what's will. kind of funny about that is I felt like everybody else was holding back. If you, if that was, if that was the goal, it's like everybody else wasn't quite getting to there, which is ironic because everyone's trying to do their own thing, and it was still pretty competitive, you know, because mm-hmm. even. Jinx was like, I'm not going to give the role that I want, and I have to process my feelings, and I'm just going to fucking knock it out of the park, and I'm going to kind of showboat. Mm-hmm. Mm. That. Yeah, I'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, so again, for Swerve, and I've said this several times this season, and I will say it again, where's the critique? Um, I want to... Okay. So this goes back to episode seven. Uh, so legendary legends looks. They were all on stage. They were supposed to, you know, emulate themselves in these outfits that were made that were made, you know, famous by RuPaul. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I am sorry. I love Raja, and I love her fashion edit. I know she's done this stuff. She knows fashion mm-hmm. so well. Blah blah blah. When she walked out on stage, I don't understand why she got the critique she did. Why were they so in love with this? If this had been on a regular season, they would be critiquing her for throwing everything on it. And it just being too much and too busy and too, like, you know, just too much. And... The fact that they were like, oh, she's a disco mystic. I even wrote that shit down and started because I'm like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> just, just, it's, uh, again, again, had that been, had that shown walk down runway on a regular season, mm-hmm. I, I know. I'm assuming she did a lot of like sewing and what have you, and maybe she did some some glue gun, what have you, but that would have been shot the fuck down. We know this. You and I know this. That would have been shot down. I I have a theory. Go on. But that's kind of again. This is my swerve because I was just like, why? Uh, why are we not critiquing these girls? Mm. Why are we not giving them positive feedback? Why are we not? Why are we reinforcing? Why are we reinforcing mistakes and mm. issues and errors? Why is this a thing that we're doing? And then you've got, I, I just, again, why do we, and then we have like um, Shay and Monet having this conversation about like they haven't won since the beginning. They're not, you know, they're wondering what they can do to push forward. They know the math, or they're kind of known math. They're doing this thing at the end and they're trying to figure out how to get to the top. But we're not giving them critique we're not giving them why they're not doing why are they not succeeding why are we missing something what is this wrong why is in comparison to this why was this better Mm. and on top of all of that (laughs) the thing i'm kind of getting pissed off about is we go to the we go to the judges having their little conversation while the queens are backstage and we're like who's the tops and every judge says someone different are two people that are different. And we're literally hearing with the exception, again, exception, maybe one or two, we're literally hearing like, oh, this person and this person and this person, this was great. This was great. And this is blah, 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 and that one was great too. And this one's good too. And I'm like, they can't, <laughs> they can't all be great. I'm sorry. I know this is an all winter season, but they cannot all be great. Why are we not critiquing Jinx for giving us the same silhouette every every time she walks down the runway? Just about. Why are we giving Raja these great fashion moments when, sorry, it was garbage? So. Where where are the creeks? Where where is it? Where is it? So I have a theory. <laughs> I have a theory on a couple of things that you said. 
I, mean, I think I'm going to go backwards. So about the judges' res- like uh, discussion, judges' panel, when, when the contestants have left. Mm-hmm. I think from a production standpoint, they are requiring all of the judges to say something good about all of the queens. And then they edit it. Mm. And what we're seeing is the edit where they say something positive about, like, all eight contestants. And David is sitting there and, like, the fuck? Like, why, 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 why? Which gets me back to my first thought when you were talking, which was, I'm wondering if this has to do with this whole thing about the contestants, like, kind of joining forces. This This is allegedly, this is a rumor, that before they all agreed... Several of the queens, if not all of these eight, said we will not be a part of a season where we get, like, put through the ringer because we're winners and we don't Mm. deserve that. So I have a, a, a funny feeling that what we're getting frustrated about as viewers is that there's no real criticism of any kind. Because I agree with you. We've kind of brought this up before. There could be constructive criticism. You can say to a queen, I can see your panties. Like, I can Mm -hmm. see, you know, this thing doesn't work, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, but even in that mystic disco thing, Raj just shot her own self down a level or two. It was like, you know, there was a point where I just kept doing it and I put too much on. And I'm watching her and I was like, shut up, shut up. What are you doing? Like, shut up. Like, why are you giving them ammunition for why you shouldn't be, you know, at the top of it? I agree with you, though. It was a little bit of a mess. And she kind of knew that, though. And that's what cracked me up when she decided to make fun of it. She's like, baby, the edibles hit. <laughs> and like, you know, that, this, this is what happened. And I was I mean, like, true. <laughs> I she did like, kind of, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, all right, got it. Like, it's it's the beginning of something. But Raja has also said earlier this season, I am not a rush queen. Like, I ruminate on it. I take days to work on a look. Like, my mannequin is in my, you know, in my home, in my apartment. I have several bottles of Sauvignon Blanc. Like, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and yeah. smoke some weed. And like, you know, when I drape things and I think about it, I come back to it. Like, so this this pressure cooker, quote unquote, of just a couple of hours in the workroom, which is really a day, day and a half, you know, is a whole different environment, I think, than what yeah. she's used to. So, hence... The design challenges can be hit or miss. I don't care who yeah. you are. Like you can be Raja and you can be really good at doing that stuff, but baby Trinity is the one that is like cleaning everybody's clock so, and putting a look together. Speaking of Trinity, yes. Uh, so my nerve actually goes to Trinity's tribute. Mm. How dare she <laughs> <laughs> make this roost? like put together fabulous fucking like mermaid trumpet whatever gown and then be like oh let me help you and let me help you and let me help you and let me help you how did no and I'm, after I'm, i help half the cast i'm gonna go back and uh-huh. i'm gonna make some gloves uh-huh and then the rest of the queens are like stop it stop it <laughs> stop it stay away from that machine like they all got pissed at her yeah now, I don't know if the gloves were an edit, because I'm like, really? The gloves were an afterthought? Because they seem to go so well with the outfit, it seems exactly. strange to me that she didn't think of it originally. Yeah. So there's a part of me that thinks that she held off on doing them, or she had already done them, but then she decided to, like, you know, kind of run around with yeah. them for fun, yeah. and that's when yeah. they caught that moment. Anyways. And I yes, just think yes, it's just, yes. it was just, I love, I love her. I love, like, she is, <sighs> I have this, like, love hate relationship with Trinity. Um, she's not one of my favorite queens. I will own that for my it's for me personally. She is not one of my favorite queens. But what I am enjoying with her is this sort of sisterly, I will help you kind of vibe that she gives off. Like she's not, while it's a competition, she's not like cutthroat. She still will help a girl out. She will still right. will work with someone. She even though, you know, and like just perfect example, um, you know, Shay was her season nine, nine, nine sister. And uh she was like, Here, let me help you make this because her outfit, she wasn't done with her outfit, and she was stressing. Shay was stressing about getting it finished in time. Right. And she was like, What do you need help with? And she's like, 
I need help with this. And it's like, sure, I'll do this. And like, it's just like, it's so refreshing mm. to see that. Right. And I know it's not the first season we've seen it on and I know all that, but I'm just still, I'm just still in awe of it because while it is a competition, and we know that Trinity is kind of always will gun for the win. She's still able to like put that aside for moments and help girls out. I, I agree with you. First, I agree with you on her tribute. It was, it was beautiful. It was so well executed. Now I will say this. It is notably something that Trinity did herself and did not have a designer do. And here's the reason why. Everyone was gushing about it. And I'm like, okay, uh, can we get the gushing to like half? Because it was really well executed. It was really well done. But when I watched it again today and they do some zoom ins, I was kind of like, baby, I could have done that. Like, I can't sew like that, but I can, I can, I can play stones. I can make them into a little design. I can do them uh -huh. around the edge of a bow. So I didn't yeah. think that was that spectacular yeah that said um i honestly really like trinity i don't know if i really liked her like fell in love with her in her season but the more mm -hmm. she gets camera time and the more she like we get to see who she is in this third iteration this third season i really am enjoying how she's just she just wants to do the best but she's not a a you know a bitch about it Right. Even though she comes from the pageant background. Right. Um, I think a lot of people think that, you know, from that realm, that industry, that world, you become very cutthroat and very, like, you know, demanding and almost, like, not irresponsible, but, like, difficult to deal with. And I don't I don't mm -hmm. think she really represents that. What I do think she's representing, though, is I, as you were talking, I thought, what if she just sat on her ass and did nothing? Like, she was done and then she did nothing. We've seen that happen in previous seasons, and mm -hmm. most of the queens get a little bit out of shape because they're busting ass and trying to make something happen, and you're just sitting over there. And so I think Trinity honestly has to be busy. I don't think she sits still very well. Mm. And so her good Judaism, like by helping out her sisters, is also helping herself because then she doesn't – overdo it with her own thing like mm -hmm. you know do too much shit to her own outfit and then ruin it and she doesn't sit around bored right so yeah. i think yeah, it's a, like... i think it's a balance who knows maybe there'll be a miscongeniality out of this season not that there's expected to be one but you never know and if there is i don't see why she wouldn't win it correct so there's that yeah so sorry that took a little long, but no, it's fine. Here we go. What about <laughs> you? Um, so I have a couple of things. Uh, I have two serves. Uh, the first serve is Jada's tribute look. Mm -hmm. Girl, like I was pissed. She turned the corner, and I was like, "Oh, okay, fuck everybody's drag." Like, what, what is <laughs> what is this? I was like, "Are we sure Jada did that shit? Like, are we sure she did that hair? And are we sure she made that outfit?" Because that outfit was really, really well executed. Mm -hmm. Like, and it looked so good on her. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, and who, who, that, that hair was big enough for a tote, a, a tote. <laughs> I was like, you can tell that the all winter season, they got to bring every goddamn thing they wanted, including the kitchen sink, apparently. Right. I mean, Trinity had like five fucking trains. <laughs> <laughs> Each trade taking up a tote. Well, the well the purple velvet one. My God, that had to take up two or three totes. That thing was huge. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that worked. Um, my second serve is for Shay's nitty look. So the mm -hmm. runway from the second from episode eight. Right. Um, I just uh, I have to recognize the expertise that she brought to this. But you but because it was crafted, you can tell she had an eye, she had a concept, she wanted to serve things, she wanted to educate the public, like she wanted to give recognition to like her her cultural roots and her background. And and so I was just like like baby when she was putting that ball cap on in the workroom, I was like, "Oh, ooh, I Girl, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. This is looking ugly. Like I'm, I'm hoping it works for you because right now, it looks a little frightening. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look close enough, when she was on the runway, the the downside of the skull cap, the bald cap issue, was that while she used the same makeup, it doesn't react the same as actual skin. And so there was a slight, very slight 
tone difference in the bald area versus like her actual yeah. scalp. That said, though, she had a beautiful big necklace that covered up like this whole thing that we saw in the workroom and the hat. Like, so, I mean, she she really, really served. Oh, yeah. Something. And I wanted like I was like, baby, that's a serve like like. But this is the difficulty with Shay. She mm. does that. And it's like amazing. And then she does other stuff. And you're like, the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> you know. Oh, gosh. OK. I love Shay. <laughs> I hate starting stuff like that. Um, but how do I? No, nope, we're just gonna say it. There's uh, this crux for her. Like this, mm. there's a desire to like represent again, represent culture and what have you. And then there's this other side of her that is very odd and kooky almost to the point of like Evie in a, in a way, not really, but just like almost kind of there. Okay. And they come together in these moments and I look at it and I go, Oh, what is this? Mm. Like, I, I, again, I'm going to call I, like why in the Santa school for girls out you know, thing, why is she wearing this pink and orange hair? why with these with these braids like two braids and then it's that and i get that you're like this is you know obviously this is kind of meant to be like high school slash college what or high school i'm assuming high school mm -hmm. but so you're meant to be younger but that it just didn't look right on her uh it just it threw me off it just threw me off and okay. and, and i'm just like i get that she's not supposed to celebrate I don't know like I, I, maybe she doesn't she doesn't celebrate I don't know whatever it is there's just something it was just I don't know where this sort of idea came from why are we wearing this denim jacket and carrying I mean carrying this purple backpack and all this stuff maybe these were things that were given to her because they are or whatever it just it just feels weird mm -hmm. and because it feels weird I don't under I don't get it, and I don't it, and I don't understand where it's coming from, and that's where I get where her this like sometimes this fashion forward that she has, which is amazing at times, is then like slammed <laughs> with this other like side of her that's very art school, and I'm kind of like, mm, mm, I don't I don't know. Like it just feels it just feels off. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. That's me. Yeah. It's fair. Um so uh swerves. Uh oh. The Vivian's tribute in episode seven. For the Despy Awards. Mm hmm The gold with the bunny ear thing. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Girl, no. Here's, here's why I'm saying no, and it's Swerve. Now, ladykins, we will provide the materials. You'll provide the creative genius. Remember, this design challenge is not about copying my look. It's about using it as inspiration to express your own imagination. Mama Roo flat out said, you are not copying my look. You are using it as an inspiration. So uh -huh. now I don't have the pictures. I should have prepared them to put side by side what the Vivian looked like and what Rue's outfit looked like. Because from the waist up, I thought they looked the same. And I was highly annoyed. You're 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 right. <laughs> and then we have from the waist down, which it, it reminds me of those like puzzle picture things, you know, where you kind of slide things in and out. Wasn't there wasn't there a thing like when we were kids that was a fashionista kind of like yeah like you would put the plate thing? down you put the plate down that and you would like trace over it and then you'd get this outfit right that's I what that. I felt happened and then mama the shoes did you clock the shoes 
on the runway when the Vivian was walking. No, not exactly, because I didn't like what she was wearing, so I wasn't paying attention much. I swear to God, her shoes were black. And I was like, why are you wearing a gold outfit and then them black platform <laughs> shoes? What? what, what, what oh, what those business? big fucking things. Right. Now I remember those. I did see those. And I was like, what is, a, what, what is this? Yes. I was like, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, no, no. No Christmas ham, no ma'am. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not having that. And it was, and, and this is the issue that we're having, right? It's like they can, these queens could be so spectacular, and then other times you're like, what the fuck? What is, that is shit? this? And that's an excellent example. Like the Vivian could be astounding in one episode and really not good in another one. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't, I don't understand. So that to me, that was a big swerve. Yeah. I was like, you copied the the bow thing with the rabbit ears. The, the gold, lame, the rouge, blah, blah, blah. I was just like, what the fuck is this shit? I was like, no, ma'am. That is not, that is copying. That is not inspired. Mm-hmm. Because what did the judges appreciate? Most of the other queens took a look and flipped it. They mm-hmm. did pants when it was a gown. They did a floor length gown when it was a baby doll dress. I mean, like they, yeah. they really kind of moved things around. They, they took the huge gown and turned it into ruffles down the sleeves. Like, I mean, that was the thing that the judges really loved about all of these inspirational looks. I wasn't as excited as the judges were, but <laughs> that being said, right, you know, right, right, right I was right, not right. a guest judge, so there's that. There's that. I uh, just, <laughs> I will. Say, I feel, I feel as though, like I, uh, I just, I would have wanted something a lot better from Vivian. I feel like she should have done something else. I don't know what off the top of my head, um, but I, I can see like, oh gosh, this is this is me thinking like immediately, and I know it sounds weird, but if she had taken that look. And kind of like what everyone else kind of like turned it around and done like a gold lame pant. Mm. And then like that, the other, the other like top made like a ruched, like big, like maybe bolero jacket. And then kind of kept like a something simple on the, on, as the, the shirt kind of thing, but like just like a something big and voluminous up top. Keep the, I was okay with the little ears part. Um, not really. That's not true because it was basically direct. But mm-hmm. um, maybe done that as like a kerchief, and then done oh. a blonde, like updo or something to kind of like keep it off the shoulder or a short, a short blonde look, and then the ruffled coat. Some again, I don't know what I want to put it here, but then like and then like a, a, a gold lame pant. I would have been okay with the black shoes then. Because at least it would have kind of gone with the outfit more, um, maybe. Are done. Because I think she tried to do like a like, if I remember it correctly, she kind of tried to do like the gold lame. I don't know if it was lame. I'm assuming lame. Um, like a strap that was tied at at the ankle. I think that's what she was going for to give the shoe connect the shoe to the mm. outfit. I can't see it off the top of my head. I may have to look right, up. Right. But that's what I'm remembering. Yeah, it's like I we can't watch fashion photo review anymore because it's on Wild Consent Plus and making you pay for that shit. You is it really the- a shame though? Because I was getting real tired of Violet being a cunt. So <laughs> that part. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> I said what I said. That's a sound clip I do not have. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so as you were talking, I was like, how could Viv have done it differently? So I think the head thing, you need to have a head thing. But what if you'd made it like a crown and made it kind of look like a spider web? And then Mm -hmm. you like and you carried that spider web motif down into the gown in some way. And um, like you take Detox's silver um, uh, Blade Runner fifth element look. You remember that where she had the Uh big bands and that was pretty Uh much all there was with the silver body? take that concept but make a web of like bands and then have a huge ass ridiculous flowing gold cape Mm. like Mm -hmm. like play with it but do something other than i'm going to duplicate the top half of your famous look i'm like no no ma'am that's a swerve right um that said 
I got some things. Uh, these are actually both positives, believe it or not, for nerve. Okay. The first one is Nitty Nitty Bang Bang. Uh-huh. They announced that, and I nearly pissed myself just hearing the theme <laughs> because I was like, no, they did not just take that and turn it into a theme. And obviously it was going to be knit, like knitwear, or something mm -hmm. was knitted. So obviously everything needed to have a, you know, element to it about stuff that had been knitted, quote unquote. Um, and I really did think, uh, honestly, in quite a long time, I was impressed with a runway theme. Like, that was not, you know, night of a thousand, fill in the blank. Um Mm -hmm. So I really appreciated that for the most part in episode eight, we had original concepts and ideas that were delivered. Um, yeah. I was super impressed, which leads me to the nerve, mama, the nerve. Quote, unquote, she 3PO. <laughs> Raja coming out looking like she is queen of like the Metroplex, Metropolis, Thunderdome of the drag queen future. I was like, the moment she turned the corner and I was like, this, 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 yes, this. Like, this is everything that last week was not. <laughs> <laughs> we went from yep. silver white to this entire gold thing. And it took me a couple of seconds because I was like, wait, is that really knit? And I was like, God bless Raja for shiny like gold surfaces this armor look this crazy headpiece the big like burgundy bob hair thing the mm -hmm. makeup and this like knit overlay thing i was just like wow wow yeah wow yeah wow so fyi i'm looking at um um the vivian's legendary look because it's on the wiki okay. um Yes, the shoes are black. Okay. Yep. So FYI, yes, the shoes are black. There are gold, like something like tied to the ankle at the ankle. I don't think they're connected to the shoe. They might be, hmm. but there. I think that was her way of trying to show put that element down. And looking at this picture, it it. Mm. I think it, she was trying to do something a little different and it ended up just being a mess. Hmm. I am sorry, but this does not look good. Yeah. It's supposed to be asymmetrical and she's got this long one side with the gold and then that kind of um, lighter gold, um, not the shiny lame fabric, but this other gold fabric kind of underneath it is kind of like, um, tool almost but not really mm -hmm. and it's just not put together well looking at this again looking at this picture right um i don't know what this i don't know what she was trying to do but whatever she was trying to do it doesn't look like it was successful because it just doesn't <laughs> it looks like it hangs wrong right so uh mm, no okay there's that <laughs> So I, I really, I mean, I thought there were some really good high points um, with things. Uh, I also do want to give uh, recognition to Evie's uh, knit look. Because mm -hmm. I don't know how you explain the serendipity, the kismet, the cosmic alignment when, if we take everything as it's revealed, Evie at her word that she worked on this outfit for four to five months uh-huh and lo and behold there is a knit runway look that she's able to wear it for because mm. i was like it is so perfect and it was it was very very well done um i still don't know how i feel about the little like yarn Oop. balls for, for <laughs> boobies like for covering the nips i don't know how still how i feel like, about I'll, that i'll put it like this and i know it would have been hard but if they had only been bigger yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I think if they had been bitter, bitter, <laughs> I'm bitter. Uh, <laughs> it had only been bigger, or if there was some way to like 
I know she doesn't do a lot of breast contouring or like chest contouring kind of thing. Right. I think I would have liked something along those lines because it just looked like they were just like there. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. That probably would have helped things as well. Yeah. Are you ready to move on to our next segment? Yes. Okay. All right, kitten. So it is time for snaps and eye rolls, a.k.a. the highs and the lows. These are the hits and the misses, things that stood out in these episodes that we are giving praise to. And we are also saying, girl. <laughs> David, to start off with you, who are you giving <laughs> snaps to? <laughs> so I know I made a, a kind of talk about Untucked and it not being like as in you know, involved in depth. Mm -hmm. But there was a moment in this most recent episode of Untucked that I thought was just personally hilarious. Okay. And it was the conversation about little booty Jada and her not having an ass <laughs> and her kind of <laughs> commenting on, yes, yeah, she's got a little booty and sometimes that's a good thing because the guys like the little booty. And, and I was just... <laughs> I was laughing so hard during this moment because it's funny and it's, mm -hmm. you know, we know that, you know, that, you know, the girls are, they're, they're usually sequestered. They're by themselves. They don't really get opportunities. They're away from their loved ones. If they have boyfriends or husbands or whatever, right. Or whoever, excuse me. Um, and, you know, and so, I mean, some of them might be single, and they might be able to play the field and they might have some fun on their own. And I just love these moments because juxtaposing just, so just that with the big booty crew, as they called it, with like, uh, well, Monet, obviously. Uh, right. um, I think they even put Viv the Vivian in that like group. And I was just like, this is just kind of cute and fun. And I, I like that they took the time to kind of, I know, have this conversation and just have some fun with it because we know, you know, sometimes they're a little lonely and they don't get a chance. And I'm not saying all drag queens are bottoms, but this was just a fun, <laughs> cheeky uh -huh, uh, um, uh, moment. So I give my snatch to it. Cause I just, I, it, it, it lightened it. It was a highlight in a, like untucked not being these like great in-depth episodes that i've seen in the past right well in this episode we didn't have the guest judge come back and talk to them yeah in untucked so instead we gave them a game and we gave them the little pink furry box which we've seen in other seasons and so they were pulling out names of other Rue girls and then they had to basically kind of charades or pantomime the other girls. And honestly, I thought that was kind of fun because by the yeah. time they got done with playing the game, quote unquote, I could really tell that they were they were having a good time, like just right. as a bunch of gals hanging out as contestants, like, you know, kind of hooting and hollering and laughing at, at each other's antics of trying to you know, right. imitate other other queens so i i did think that was funny no i agree with you like it was kind of interesting this whole conversation about who's got you know the the junk in the trunk and you know and little right. little jada little booty little yeah. booty yeah no that was that was fun <sighs> what about you um so it's kind of funny but this really stood out to me in see in episode eight of santa school for girls because it they didn't have to leave it in. They didn't have to edit it in. But it really stood out to me and made me laugh. So Vivian is playing... Um, uh, I headmistress forgot. Nutmeg. Head, yeah, headmistress, um, you know, Nutmegan. And she is doing this whole Joan Crawford, you know, multiple layers, like overly old Hollywood dramatic thing. And they do the first time, and then they go to do it the second time, and RuPaul is on set and starts cracking the fuck up mm -hmm. and breaks Vivian, and Vivian calls her ass out and is like, Ru, you cannot do that. <laughs> you cannot laugh 
while I'm trying to do this because like and it loses loses her focus. And I loved how Rue was just cackling and is like, I'm so sorry. Like <laughs> I was, what the fuck is going on in this show? Like like but that was the thing that I loved, honestly. That was that was I mean, it kind of carries on forward because then um you know, Rue gives this really good feedback to Monet where she's like, you're doing this Womana voice. Why are you doing that? Like, I think Monet's voice is just as good. Um, and and I really appreciated that, like, you know, there was a, there was some good banter. Like, the cast feels like they can have fun with mm-hmm. Rue because they don't feel that way in a regular season. Everyone is scared shitless to say mm-hmm. anything, to, to clap back at Mama. And, you know, Raja's been the most vocal one on the stage this season. And has kind right. of said things, you know, including my all time favorite where she was like, are you sure? Because I was going to stay like <laughs> where she thought she won and she didn't win. And I was like, yes, I was like, call her out. <laughs> but anyways, I thought the root crack up with the Vivian would honestly deserve snaps because I just love that the editors left it in because it really showed how they were having fun while trying to complete the challenge mm-hmm. um and it and it made it look good for as goofy as it was um mm-hmm. you know in, in a concept so yeah uh oh boy damon oh. <laughs> what are your eye rolls for oh okay well <laughs> what did i write down oh, <laughs> oh let me see <laughs> Oh, um, why did they win? Why did they win? This goes to the most recent episode. Oh, okay. Wait, okay. There's two levels of winning, so go on. (laughs) Well, because you win as top two, and then you win lip sync. So there's... Yeah. Yeah. So again... Um, and I know you're going to talk about the lipstick a little later. I'm pretty sure, pretty fucking sure. <laughs> uh, but, but, um, so, okay. Again, love Raja. Love her to death. Think this is, she's, you know, doing her best. <laughs> but, I don't think she did that well in the challenge. Mm. Personally. I don't think she did that well. In comparison to some of the other girls. I don't think she was as good as everyone thinks she was. Okay. So this is me personally. This is my personal, this is my opinion. Um, (laughs) I feel... I liked Monet better. I liked Trinity better. I liked Jinx better. Mm-hmm. I know, yeah, yeah. No, I just, I, I just, I felt that those three, I think, overall did a better job, personally, me personally. <sighs> then there's Vivian, and while I think she did a great job. I was having a really hard time with the voice she was choosing because mm. it sounded very much, very much like her Trump voice. And I think maybe she was kind of putting that in there a little bit to kind of add that element of um, like the way the character was kind of going. Like, you know, it was very much that kind of like, politician-y garbage, you know, kind of thing. And I think, and again, I think that's fair, but it just didn't feel right. And to me personally, again, as I said, I feel like there were a few queens that did better than them both. And the only reason they didn't win was because they were in quote-unquote smaller roles. Mm. And I just, I'm getting a little, little bit annoyed with the 
production because to be blunt more than likely this was done to give Raja a win so that there would be two queens with only one star the two Ooh. queens that past couple of episodes have been talking about how they want to move forward and get more stars to get to the end. Uh-huh. That is Shay and Monet. Uh-huh. So simmer on that for a second. Okay. Okay. Um, so I will say this, I disagree on Jinx being one of the better performers. And here's why I think she tried too hard. It became annoying to me how obvious it was that she was trying to make more out of her role. And there was a part of me that was like, Jinx, this is for, this is for camera. This is not for the stage. Mm. And she wasn't being told to pull it back a little bit. Just just a little bit. You don't have to cut it in half, but you need to not, like... 20%. Try to showboat against everybody else. Because it was kind of obvious that you wanted this to win, be a win for you because it's an acting challenge. But because you didn't get one of the major roles and you had kind of a quote-unquote side character, I think you were trying to make it a lot more than what it was. And it started to, like, smell a little to me. Mm-hmm like desperation that's fair and i'm like that's not a good scent on you or delusion whichever (laughs) um (laughs) call back uh if you haven't seen the original season she was in you would know what i'm talking about uh yeah so mm, i don't know like i agree with you that it was kind of produced because i was a little surprised that raja won although to be fair in the judges opinions in the acting in the movie what was edited what we saw Raja did kind of stand out, and honestly, I think the runway knocked it out of the park. Like, I think they were just gobsmacked, and they were like, mm. well, shit. Like, you know, how, how do we not do that? Because she's kind of been screwed over earlier this season. She had some really good runway looks, and uh-huh. kind of seemed to not matter. So... The other fashion episode where she made this gold lame bolero jacket, or whatever the fuck that was, that was amazing. Yeah. No, she she knows how to how to show herself off. I mean, it's in episode seven she put too much on. Like there were there was some aesthetic kind of issues. Uh, so you know, right? Le- less edibles when making. Uh, <laughs> is, I guess the th- the lesson for that. But no, like you know, and so I was like, I was really proud of the fact that she won. I think it's interesting that you're kind of posing about the production thing. So here's my theory, uh, which normally we would probably say for after show, but I'll say this. I think Shay and Monet are gonna win. Possibly one each in the next two episodes. Mm. And then they have a significant problem because the top four go to the finale. And if if Shay gets a win and Monet gets a win, like they each get a pin. Mm -hmm. And those are all the pins that get given out in episodes nine and ten. Then we end up with seven queens with two pins each and one queen with three pins. Mm Mm-hmm. Which means, how do you determine the top four? So I think there might be some production planned drama and mm. some other shenanigans to come. Because we Maybe haven't had another. shenanigans. We haven't had shenanigans in a couple episodes. It's been a few since we had the whole like you get a, you get two pins and you have to give a pin away thing. Oh, girl. So I what wonder. If... I wonder. I wonder if they're up to some shit. What if in like these last episodes is double pins, not one to give away. You get two pins. Wow. Well, they could, well, they could do this. You get a pin for being in the top two and you get the cash prize and a pin for winning the lip sync. Right. Right. If I was production, I would do that. Girl, I'd be like, okay, so as, as we <laughs> as we get to the final episodes, we're gonna add a new element. 
Not only do you get a pin for being top two, and you get to lip sync, but the winner gets a cash prize and an extra pin for Whoop. themselves. Whoop! <laughs> Whoop! Yeah. That is, that is, that is the, that is, that, that. Yeah. That right there. Yeah. That is, that is. Because they can only do it in these last couple of episodes, and then everyone would be kind of dying to win. They could also do one other thing. Mm-hmm. They can eliminate the Platinum Plunger, and then no one gets blocked. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. They could do all of that. Mm-hmm. Two stars. Well, one star. One star if you win. One star if you're a top two. One star if you're winning. Win. No more blocking. Yeah. So it's a free-for-all in mm-hmm. these last couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. Shit. I would I would pay attention to that. I would be very I would intrigued. Too. I'm sitting here thinking about it and I'm like Yeah. Oh, okay. We just cracked the fucking code. Yes. Sorry. Right, because this <laughs> shit was was filmed what a year ago and it, it totally, you know, is gonna play out that way. We don't know. I mean we'll see. I don't it, it, it we don't know. Anyway. Well, with that being said, <laughs> Ooh, Gary. What? What are your eye rolls? Well, I've, got, at- I've got two things. I alluded to one in pre-show. Um, I'm calling it the downfall of perfection. This is my beef. This is this is a total me thing. Just like you were talking about how you weren't thrilled about how things went, about why they win. Mm-hmm. I feel this way about a perfection issue. It has annoyed me. I didn't really bring it up. I don't have images to go with it. But episode seven, when Mama Roo walks the runway... In that pink velvet outfit with the big gold chain. Mm-hmm. I have reached the limit of my patience. Wait, I think I have I think I have a sound clip for this. This. I've had it officially. Queens, and it's worse when it's rue, not getting a nude panel skin match. This shit, I am done with it. So she's wearing that pink velvet dress. And it is obvious that this is supposed to be a nude illusion, and it is not nude, and it is not her skin tone. It just looks bad. Mm-mm. That said, this most recent episode, here is my beef. I have a visual to go with this, and this is probably going to be a little wild, because you, you may not understand what my beef is when I bring the picture up here, David. Uh-oh. Now, I will say, I thought Rue looked stunning in this, this look for the runway. Okay, and I think the the dress is a classic kind of silhouette. I don't know how I feel about this thing off the shoulder, but whatever. Um, mm-hmm. She looks so good. This hair mm-hmm. is so good. Except, what the fuck is this shit? What is go- what is going on with this? Why? Why? Why do we have wings? And why are the <laughs> wings not matching? On the left and on the right. For those of you that cannot see the video of, of why I am screaming about this, David can see on the screen that I have highlighted with two big old pink ovals what I am bitching about. She came down the runway and I was like, fire that bitch. Fire the wigstress. What is this? I don't understand this. On one side, they are like, they are almost like two thirds of the length as the other side. What? 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 What is this? Well, I know one thing. I get, I get that this wig is not symmetrical, but good golly, Miss Molly, like, pick I something know. and make it work. It looks like crap. I know one thing. Yes. This wouldn't have happened under Delta work. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> I'm looking at this, and I am trying to figure out what is up. Like, I'm, I'm being dead serious as I'm looking at this, and I'm like, there's something going on with, so, okay, all right, I'm going to, as I'm, like, th- th- when you clear the, the ovals, I'm kind of, like, looking at it. Right. I'm looking at this, so, for everyone that's looking at, who can, on the... As you're looking at the picture, the left side, you have this tendril of hair that is very close together, kind of just like a one piece 
sort of like sitting, kind of going off on the side of the ear. It's sticking out and then going curling, not curling, swerving yeah. down. Yeah. More kind of curling down. And it's this thing, and I get I get what I think they were trying to go for with like a side, like a um, um, sideburn kind of moment. But it it doesn't make sense. So on one side, on the left side, it is solid kind of full piece. On the right, it looks like it was taken and like teased a little bit to kind of, I don't want to say fluff it out, but look a little bigger. And some of it's not done because there's this piece at the bottom mm -hmm. that I can't quite figure out what that is. I would love to see the back of this wig. Yeah. Because I want to know what this is. Because as I'm looking at the wig in total, mm -hmm. there's these curls, like at the like at the very top, there's this big curl in the blonde, the more ooh, excuse me, light blonde color that is up a little bit and then swooping to the right. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's meant to be like a bang or right. whatever that is kind of off to the side and kind of pinned back maybe. I don't know what it is. But it's now sitting on top of the hair that is meant to be this sideburn kind of moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if because of this, they fluffed out that right side to hold it there. But again, I need to see the back of the wig. I'm not a wigstress. I'm not a. I'm not a. Uh, um, um, a hairdresser. I am not a cosmetologist. Right. But I feel that is why. It's just a supreme annoyance for an updo. But it, it, I'm it like, does feel weird. I'm like, and, I don't understand what's happening here. Like, and the fact that we've got these red dangly earrings is just drawing all the more attention to mm -hmm. that region around her neck. It's like, it's just, it looks like shit. Mama, mm -hmm. this is garbage. I just don't like how these two wing things like are going on because they're mismatched. They're not the same size. They're not the same shape. And I hear what you're saying about the big swoopy bang and how it kind of comes around. I do think the back of it has something to do with it. But I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, this just yeah. looks bad. I feel like the left side of the photo, which would have been Rue's right face, all of those should have been just pulled to the back, just mm -hmm. pulled around to the back and tacked and, and sprayed into place. And I think I would have liked it better. And it probably would have made more sense because that that shoulder piece is on her right side. Mm -hmm. And I would like the dramatic flair of the fabric not being distracted by the fact that we have hair that's kind of hanging down. Right. That's right next to it. It makes me wonder if somehow the hair and the fabric kind of like met and this is the best they could do without like really trying to redo something because mm. like the fabric, like the, the fringy ends kind of pulled on it. I don't mm. know, but don't it, know. Just, so, it just, something, it just something annoyed yeah. the piss out of me. Yeah. And something. this is why I was saying it's the downfall of perfection because when you have so many things going so well, and then you start losing just minute points for shit like this. It annoys me because I'm like, really? 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 Yeah. Like, come on. You know? Yes. So anyways, there's that. That's just my personal and, opinion. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Um, and, the after, and, and just again, you know, Emmy winning, Wigstress, Delta work. Right. Would not have done that. Probably not. Gabriel, if I ever get a chance to meet you in person, Miss Delta, we I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this picture and we're gonna have a little conversation about it because I really would like to know your personal thoughts. <laughs> uh anyways, my second thing of eye rolls you were alluding to earlier, I I listed not calling out bullshit, aka that craptastic lip sync. Girl, when I saw your post in the COL DR entourage uh, you know, entourage telegram chat, mm -hmm. I was like Oh, ho, ho, here we go. I want to hear this. Well, it's isn't it obvious? It was a shitty lip sync. I don't understand why they were able to get away with that. So here's my very first thought. When I first watched it, immediately I was like, shame on you, Vivian. Shame on you. I think she, I think she threw it on purpose to make Raja win so that Raja would have to do the block. Mm. Um. 
I don't think she was performing at her full whatever. I thought the stunt with the with the quote unquote white t shirt, which I don't think was white. I think it was like a whitish gray. I don't know what the story with that was. And the water with the titty bib thing did not work. And then she nearly wipes out. And I mm-hmm. thought at first, the first time I watched it, I thought it was because there was water on the stage. Even though she did the water at all the way at the back, I thought, well, maybe mm-hmm. a bunch of it dripped off when mm-hmm. she was dancing in that area. But then when I watched it again today, there was it didn't look like there was any water on the stage. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what happened that she lost her footing, but I honestly atten- do think – I don't think she intentionally fell, but I honestly do think that she slipped. And then mm-hmm. as – the guest judge says, good save. I was like, oh, shit, they left that in. Like, they didn't have to laugh at her. <laughs> like, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't need to do her dirty like that. And leave the guest judge going, ooh, good save. And I was like, oh, shit. Right? Right. But then, okay. like, Raja, like, I love Raja. And no, she's not known for being an incredible lip syncer. She's not a lip sync assassin. She's said this. She's like, you know. She's a lounge act. She's not, you know, a, a big boom, boom, pow, you know, gymnastics kind of, you know, yeah. crazy person. Um, but. but Raja not pinning down her wig. What was up with that? Like she changed. She adjusted her wig like three times that we saw while performing and yet was funny to the Vivian. It was kind of like, ah, she's OK. I mean, she had these great comedic kind of moments. And was doing this different stuff, and she was totally fine with the Vivian licking her armpit. I mean, which is like a weird callback to the previous episode where Trinity like performed analingus on Jada. I mean, talk about something in a lip sync that goes down in history. Good golly, Miss Molly! Like, right? I was like, right? Like that I, was an epic moment. Yeah. So, and then oh. we had, we just have this. I was so annoyed. With the whole lip sync, just on both of them, boo to both of them, I was not happy with what happened. And I kept thinking, if this had been a regular season, would Rue have honestly been that entertained and allow it to go down the way it did? Because I actually would have loved the drama, which we're missing a little bit of the season, if Rue had said, meh. And just didn't award any money to anybody. Mm-hmm. I was like, eh, it was okay. Maybe yeah, both can do better. I just turn my page, look at my notes. Um, <laughs> okay, I didn't write anything down. Um, yeah, I like Jim asked me like, who do you think won? And I said Raja immediately. Yeah, and the reason was because, in my opinion. Vivian was trying, kind of like what you were talking about with Jinx in the in the mm. um, in the in the movie. Right. I feel that Vivian was trying too hard. Yeah, she was throwing all of these things that she, to be blunt, I don't think needed to be there. Right. Why? Why? One. Why is she wearing this outfit? Okay, I get why she's wearing it now. Because oh, she's supposed to be like. The girl at the the girls gone wild like red t-shirt contest kind of thing. Right. So she's maybe trying to do a quote unquote super freaky girl, um, even though she's lip syncing the song. But everything that she was trying to do was just it just felt it felt sloppy. I have a theory. In addition to to the Vivian throwing it. I don't think she knew the song. Mm -hmm. Because in the very beginning, I was like, why is she not lip syncing? Why is she not lip syncing? Like there was, it was the very first two, like the first 15 seconds, 20 seconds of the song. It distinctly looked like the Vivian didn't know the words and wasn't lip syncing. Now there was one moment where Raja also didn't lip sync, but it was kind of a throwaway in the part of the lyric. It was more Mm -hmm. like a sound effect kind of thing. Yeah. And I was like, the fuck's going on? Yeah. And I was like, this is kind of weird. And it, it just got weirder. Weirder. Yeah. And I was there like, was something. Ugh. Okay. It was just, it just, honestly, it just felt a little sloppy. And, and just, I mean, I'm being honest with you, like from Raja's like wig not being pinned down and kind of slipping every now and then to the, the random Raja like nipple just 
popping out um, <laughs> to the yeah. it looked like the dress that she was wearing was Riley was wearing was a little too long on the one side and she maybe was stepping on it. Um, and then, like I was talking about with Vivian, this whole white T-shirt kind of moment, it, that outfit did not look that great. Yeah. And then we get all these mo like this wet T-shirt moment that doesn't really work because it's all the way in the back of the stage. And I get maybe they had to do it there because if she had done it in the front, it would have been detrimental to the other queen. So, okay, I get that. Maybe that's why they did it um, there. But then that, like, super unsuccessful, like, flip somersault i i don't know what it was but it it, it didn't it didn't work yeah. um and I, I again i just don't understand where this was going and yeah. why it was happening and 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 so my eye roll is why didn't we call it out why didn't the judges why, why rue specifically didn't say anything about it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. is is Rue taking an edible or a hit before the lip sync so that she is feeling okay with this kind of stuff? Because it's a little shocking to me how she seems all right. Like, I, I, you know, we talked earlier about, like, the queens not, you know, being criticized. But I was like, really? Okay. Yeah, this was just... It just was... It just... Mm. And I was okay with Raja winning. Like, I was okay with her, you know, being top two. I was also okay with her winning the lip sync, because honestly, out of the two of them, I thought she did a better job. She yeah. at least seemed to be trying to lip sync instead of pulling stunts. But Right. So there's that. And not being successful. The stunt's not being successful. That is the thing about a stunt, okay? Mm -hmm. If a stunt is successful, then cool. Um, actually, I'm going to... Oops, wrong chat. Go to the other chat. Um, I'm going to read something that I love because Smashy said it in the Telegram chat. So I'm going to call it out. So sat Smashy, God damn it. Is there alcohol in this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Smashy, Pup Smashy says, um, lipstick for your legacy rules as determined by watching so many fucking seasons of the show. I forget. Maybe it's lipstick for your life rules, whatever. To win, sell the song. If you can't sell the song, comedy. If you can't do comedy, sex. If you can't do sex, gymnastics. If you can't do gymnastics, props. If you can't do any of that, go the fuck home, Charlie Hyde. Okay, now that last line, I'm just going to say for the record, is Smashy's attitude and opinion about Charlie Hyde. Because this is not the first time Smashy has brought up <laughs> about the infamous Charlie Hyde bark and bark and not doing a damn thing. And I'm not saying Smashy's wrong. I'm just saying for the record, like that that's what that last part was, was just, I think it's a personal dig. Yes. May they never meet in real life. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think, you know, Smashy was, was pointing out very well. There's kind of a, a legacy that we've seen. There are a couple things that you do. And if you can't do this, then you do this. And if you can't do that, you do, you do this. Like, like it's a whole progressive kind of thing, um, you know, and stunts is one of them. Going mm -hmm. back to props. Yep. And for those of you that never saw the All-Star season with Shangela, you know, the season of the stunts. Right. You wouldn't understand kind of where that comes from. But yeah. Yeah. So that's episode seven and eight, kids. You know, uh, lots of opinions, some hot takes. I'm sure you might have some things that you want to say about that. And you know what? You can tell us. We're, we're 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 big boys we, we can handle it so you go to comesoutloud.com as our uh, website blog you can send us an email to comesoutloud at gmail.com you can even give us a phone call which is where you take a device with a microphone probably a phone and you call 361 col talk that's 361-265-8255 and you can leave us a voicemail message and we would be happy to play it on the show. Or you can tell us in the voicemail. You just want to give it your opinion. You don't want to play it. And we'll probably just discuss it randomly. Uh, if you would like to follow us online, you can pretty much go anywhere the social media is. Uh, we're a little older, so we're not on the TikToks, which, by the way, apparently is disappearing from the platforms. Shocker. Because um, apparently there's, like, data hacking and shit going on. Oops. But uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you can pretty much find us. Type in, uh, as one word, comes out loud. If you would... <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it's David showing on, on the screen. That's the phone number to call. Uh, <laughs> so if you would like to uh, join the social chat that Damon had referenced, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram. That's T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M hyphen C-O-L-D-R. Uh, and join the discussion on there about the most recent episodes. Um, it, it, we keep that uh, chat running year round, whether there's a regular season on or not. Um, so you're welcome to join the conversation there about anything that's uh, the RuPaul Drag Race universe related. If you would like to know about when we're doing our recordings of our regular shows, um, we do them live over here on YouTube. You can go to tinyurl.com backslash uh, calendar. That's C-A-L-E-N-D-A-R hyphen C-O-L. And if you would like to... It, support us there's several ways you can do that and one of them is this lovely little place called zazzle that's z-a-z-z-l-e dot com backslash cubs out loud and you can get several items while you're there um, you can get as damon is demonstrating for us uh, for example a coffee mug that has the cubs out loud drag race logo on it it happens to be called the two-tone mug so it has a matching interior as the as well as the handle um, we have other items as well with the logo on it including our uh, apparel so as damon is showing off the lovely like baby blue t-shirt uh, that has the cubs out loud drag race logo um, listed on it i happen to be wearing our um, drag pride color uh, consent shirt so this is based off of smashy's design that he did for us on the consent series and they have a different a uh, whole bunch of them but they all say consent is my foreplay and then they happen to have stripes diagonally um, with a little symbol so this happens to be uh the drag pride logo uh has a lovely pink crown and some pink and blue and white stripes uh, but you can get those things at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud if you also are interested in learning about when we talk about these things called pre-show post-show you'll become a patron a supporter over at patreon.com slash cubs out loud and for a dollar or more a month charged automatically you as a member a supporter <laughs> just one dollar um can get the access to the rss feed exclusive to cubs out loud drag race um, which includes pre and post shows that we kind of bookend things with as well as our regular series or if you'd like you could just give us some coin we'd be happy to take your tip you can go to paypal.me slash cubs out loud for a one-time donation uh, to help keep the lights on and the things that we do here uh, as far as finding us as a podcast, uh, the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race is a separate uh, audio feed, so you can pretty much find us anywhere online that you have a podcast player. You can rate us on iTunes, preferably with five stars and a lovely compliment. Um, you can also uh, subscribe pretty much anywhere you find podcasts. Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they do so? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79 that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9, on most bear-related sites or Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umber on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work, but it is a mix of my drag and porn and porn and other things. For sure. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. Um, I did create a separate drag Twitter account, which is Gabriel73DRAG. Um, I On my other Twitters, I've basically blocked anything that happens to be drag content to avoid spoilers. And so far, it has been working out pretty decently. Yes. So, yeah. Don't look at my don't look at my feed. Well, I don't know if you get my feed. I don't really post a lot of stuff drag related sometimes. But um, my personal feed as it comes through is often time spoiled because mm -hmm. of because some queens, some bitches can't wait, you know, 10, 15 minutes before they have to say something about the most recent episode after it airs. And since the show is on Paramount Plus and you can watch it, you know, when it pops in at like midnight the night before or midnight the day of. I have woken up on Friday morning at 7 a.m. Mm. and looked at my fucking Twitter and been spoiled. Like, when do these bitches have time to watch this show? I, I guess, granted, I guess if it's Paramount Plus and you're in another country, I guess you probably get it maybe ahead of time. Or if you're on the West Coast, it's your midnight, but it's our 3 a.m. So, right. Yeah. Understandable. But with that, uh, we want to thank you for joining us for another uh, dual episode discussion and recap. Uh, we will be back after episodes 9 and 10 in just a couple of weeks. So uh, we look forward to seeing what the rest of the season has to show. Mm -hmm. So with that, goodbye. Bye. Bye.